In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the environment lighting features in Mendicore. If we take a look at the render for this scene, you can immediately see what's wrong. We only have one light, so a large amount of the scene is in shadow, and since we have no indirect light, the shadows are completely black. To make this look a bit more realistic, we need to add some sort of indirect lighting. Using Final Gather is an option, however it can add a lot to the render time and introduce problems such as flickering. Mental Core has a feature called Environment Lighting, which can be used to achieve the look of indirect light without the complications and speed hit that Final Gather can cause. It allows you to generate ambient light in the scene from an image and in some cases may be a suitable replacement for Final Gather. First let's take a look at the global environment light. You can find it in the Mental Core Globals under the Options tab. Checking Enable Flood Color allows you to use a solid color for the environment light instead of a texture. Let's see what that looks like. You can see our shadows are no longer completely black, but we don't have any contrast or shading. To make this look better, we need to enable ambient occlusion. Now it's starting to look better. The ambient occlusion is providing the shading in the shadowed areas. Now we can try using a texture instead of the flood color. To do this, Create a core environment and attach a spherical map to the texture input. Since we're using a HDR texture, set the color profile to linear. You can see our scene is now being lit by the HDR texture. For outdoor scenes, this setup may be all you need. However, in this example, we have a closed off room at the back that should be receiving a lot less indirect light than the room in the front, but the global environment light will affect everything equally. To get around this, we need to take advantage of local environment lights. Local environment lights work in a similar way to the global environment light, but you can use falloff to control the range that the light affects and it also has a variety of features to help you sculpt the look of ambient light. They're incredibly fast to render as it uses the ambient occlusion already calculated by the shaders. First let's disable the global environment light and create a local one to achieve the same effect. Under the Mental Core menu, select Create Environment Light. Let's take a look at the shader. The first option is Light Type, which allows you to select between Omni and Directional Light Source. Light mode controls how the light will affect the scene. Add works the same way as a standard light and will just add to the light in the scene. Replace allows you to override the global environment light and also blends with other local environment lights in the scene that are set to replace mode without increasing the brightness. Scale is used to brighten or darken any existing environment light and tint works in the same way except you can use a color to also tint the light. In this case it will be my main environment light source so I'm going to use replace mode Light effects allows you to select if the light will affect ambient or indirect light, so it can also be used to control final gather. Color mode controls how the color perimeter is used. When set to as color, the light will just be a solid color, or you can attach a ramp to color the light over the fall off distance. As environment, we use the texture as an environment map to generate ambient light, the same way the global environment light works. Now I'll attach the same HDR texture. Make sure to set the color profile to linear. Intensity controls the strength of the light. AO amount controls the amount of ambient occlusion applied to the light, and AO color controls the color of the ambient occlusion. Directionality Blend lets you control whether the light will affect all surfaces or only surfaces facing the light, similar to how a point light would work. Directional Focus is only used when the light type is set to directional and it controls the spread of the light in the direction it's aiming. The environment parameters are similar to what's found in the global environment light and controls the rotation and blur of the environment texture. And finally we have fall off parameters, which we'll take a look at later. If I do a render now, it should match what we had with the global environment light.
Now let's take a look at decreasing the amount of ambient light in the back room. Create a new environment light and set the light mode to scale. When using scale mode, most of the color options aren't available. The only setting we need is intensity. A value of 0.2 should be enough for this case. We also need to enable fall off to make sure the light doesn't affect the whole scene. The fall off start perimeter controls the distance at which the light will start to fade off and the fall off stop controls the distance at which the light will no longer be visible. Finally, fall off speed controls how quickly the light will fade from the start to stop distance. The value of 1 is a linear fall off. Anything higher will increase the fall off speed. Let's place the light in the back room. Next we'll tweak the fall off values to suit the size of the room. You can also scale the light to stretch the fall off in any axes. Once the light is set up, you can turn off display locators to hide the fall off locators. See how that looks. You can see now the back room is receiving much less ambient light. Another thing you might see with Final Gather is the light bouncing off the red wall at the back. We can also use the local environment light to create this effect. Create a new environment light. This time we'll leave it on add mode. We'll set the light type to directional and the color of the light to red to match the wall. The occlusion color could also be a dark red. A little directionality blend might also be a useful thing here. Let's place the light along the back wall. Next we'll turn on fall off. The fall off values are relative to the scale of the light. So since we scaled the light, we need to decrease the fall off to match the scene. I'll also lower the intensity of the light. Now we'll do another render. You can see we're now getting a subtle amount of red light affecting the cubes. Using these techniques can be a great and effective way to add fast and problem-free indirect lighting to your renders.